Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. We're in a celebratory mood here at DRF because last week we exceeded 20,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. I want to thank our producers, Chloe and Lucia, for their excellent work, all the great handicappers and analysts that contribute to the DRF YouTube channel. And of course, I want to thank all of you who allow us into your homes and on your phones to watch the DRF analysis and let us talk racing with you. And if you haven't subscribed just yet, Please do so because join the party. We've got cupcakes, 20K, DRF. Mike, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it certainly is. I got a, I got a cupcake too, in case you were, in case you were wondering, I got one. Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for, for subscribing, Dan. I got to feel like most people probably join in because of you, Dan. You're a, you're a true professional. I'm happy to be working with you, and I'm happy people tune in. Mike, you're a very honest, and that's why you're a great handicapper, because you can spot talent. That's why he's the best analyst in the business. Thank you very much. 20,000 subscribers. Here's to 20K more. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Friday, April the 14th. Race number nine at Keeneland. We're going a mile on the turf. It's the maker's mark, and it is a good race. It's a grade one. $600,000 is the purse. Let's take a look at this field. Remember to scan or click the QR code for race of the day access on mobile. We've got one of the better turf horses in the world making his seasonal debut. That's the seven modern games. Three to five on the morning line. Going to take some beating. Yeah, uh, he's, he's a very short price on the line here, Dan. We've seen this horse three times uh, previously in North America. He's run really, really well um, in all of those races, uh, partic particularly that last one at the Breeders' Cup Mile uh, right over this course and distance in November. Um, he's just way the horse to beat. There are some other good horses in here. Modern Games is way the horse to beat. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Modern Games is a horse that likes to sit fairly close for a European runner. Uh, we're not expecting a lot of pace at all in this race. Shea Pierre was up close last time out in the grade three Tampa Bay. That was off of a long layoff. I think he's better from slightly off the pace, but there are really no burners in here. It'll be very interesting to see how this plays out on the track. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how it's going to play out either. I mean, certainly the three could make the lead in here. I, I kind of thought the more I looked at it, Dan, I just kind of felt like maybe the key to the whole pace is uh, the number four, Emmanuel. They've been rating him in his recent turf starts, but he did win his turf debut on the lead. He showed good speed on dirt to start his career. I wonder if uh, Pletcher and Castellano decide to get aggressive here. The number one speaking scout's going to need some help if this pace projector is right. It favors front runners. He'll be coming from the back of the pack. But make no mistake about it, the Grand Motion Train four-year-old was getting very good towards the end of last year, winning the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby in his final start of 2022. And his first race this year was a good effort as well. Let's go back to the Pegasus World Cup turf. He was in between horses most of the way. Paco Lopez will ease him out into the stretch and he'll get up for third behind a tone. All in all, it was a Solid effort going a mile and an eighth. Louis Sayas takes the mount for the Maker's Mark mile. Do you think the pace scenario really works against him, especially turning back to a mile, a distance that could be a bit sharp for him? I think it's a it's definitely got to be a concern, Dan. I, I appreciate the fact that this horse just feels like he's he was continuing to get better sort of towards the end of last year. Maybe that, that trend will continue now as a four-year-old. He ran well in the replay we just watched, but um, he was just no match in that race. He did well to get third in there. I thought he got a great trip, though, from Paco Lopez, and um, he was right alongside a tone at the top of the stretch. He was just no match in that race. He ran well. Um, I think it's fair to wonder how well he matches up with these horses. I think it's fair to wonder whether cutting back to a mile actually helps him. The number two up to the mark is going to get a class test, but ever since Todd Pletcher switched this horse to turf, he has become a new animal. We're going to watch his most recent start, a stakes class allowance race at Gulfstream back in early March. And we see him on the outside with work to do turning for home. But once he gets out and sees full clearance, he unfurls that long stride and he runs down a pretty classy old timer, an Olympic runner. Yeah, th these are two impressive turf starts uh, for up to the mark uh, since Pletcher made the circuit switch with him. Dan, his his two races sort of look identical, uh, just sort of strongly rated back off the pace early, get him to the clear in the stretch, and he flies home in his races. These are fast final fractions he's putting in. Um, he looks like a horse who could be really dangerous in this division going forward. They're asking a lot of him here. I won't be surprised when he runs really well. 
Chez Pierre, the number three, won the first five starts of his career. Very impressive North American debut at Tampa Bay last year, then had a perfect trip against a weaker field in the Henry Clark Stakes, but showed very good uh, acceleration to win that weak race at Laurel. Last time out at Tampa Bay, it was his first start off of a lengthy layoff. He seemed a little bit keyed up coming out of the gate. And all in all, I think he gained a lot of fitness from that effort. Yeah, maybe he did. It'll be interesting to see um, whether he can sort of bounce back a little bit uh, out of that race. Then, Because you're right, the layoff could be a viable excuse. It was still a pretty uh, disappointing performance, I thought, even though he was on the outside for a long way. He got really tired in the stretch. And, you know, just based on his his two starts over here last year, I just kind of feel like I could, I could go either way on him. I thought he was okay when in the allowance race at Tampa. I thought he was a lot better second off the layoff in the Henry Clark. So maybe that's the key takeaway, Dan. Maybe he will take a step forward here. Emmanuel is the number four, and this is a horse that was briefly on the Kentucky Derby Trail in 2022, finishing third in the bluegrass, but he's found a home on the turf. Now, he took advantage of a paceless race in his grass debut, wiring him in the Pennine Ridge at Belmont. Since then, he's shown the ability to rate and finish, including this race, the grade three Canadian turf, to make it two for two in 2023. And Emmanuel was in behind horses turning into the stretch, but everything works out. He finds a seam and he wins this race pretty easily yeah he does he got a, a good overall trip in here but uh, once he got clear it, it really he didn't really have much problem closing this race down a good performance from him um in other words he, i don't i don't think think he's that flashy at least so far in his turf races but he's very versatile um and he could certainly make the lead in this race if they decided to put him there i wonder if that makes him a little more dangerous the horse he kicked down came right back to win the Appleton Stakes in his next start with a 96 buyer. The number five is Dr. Zemf, who made a successful North American debut for trainer Chad Brown in an allowance race at Gulfstream, going a two-turn seven and a half furlongs. He was very impressive doing it. He was not like a lot of European horses, slow from the gate. It took him a while to get into stride. Not at all. This horse was pretty close to the pace, looked like a winner every step, draws away in the last 16th. Yeah, re really nice performance here from this horse. He did get an overall good trip. Maybe he was, you know, a half a step slow from the gate, but he just got himself right into position behind the leaders. Um, Tyler Gaffleon rode him with an awful lot of confidence coming to the stretch. He won for fun in there. Um, that was a, a really nice performance. Obviously, this is a huge step up in class for him, but he's a two-time stakes winner in France or in, in Ireland. So um, there's a real chance this horse turns out to be good. If you believe in the horse for course angle, you'll upgrade the six in love who won the Keeneland turf mile back in 2021 over a good grass course in love has always been a solid horse with nice tactical speed. He can get up close to the pace and he won't be adversely affected if it's slow. His last couple of starts have been on synthetic. They've been fine. He's better on turf. I agree with that. He did win a race on the all weather two starts back, but he's better on this surface. He certainly has the back races to be really, really tough in here. I guess the the one problem with, uh, you know, maybe wanting to go uh, at any any kind of short price on him, he's not supposed to be short in here, Dan, but if he takes money, I mean, he didn't really run uh, that many uh, really good races last year, but he does seem like he likes this turf course. And again, he has races on the go back that would give him a real chance. Modern games may not get enough press as enough presses that he deserves here in North America. Just consider his overall body of work. Winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, winner of the French 2000 Guineas, winner of the Woodbine Mile, winner of the Breeders' Cup Mile. Here's his win in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He is a very tactically inclined horse who is well suited to the tight turns and the fast paces in American racing. Once he gets into the clear here, he's just too good for this field in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He sweeps by him in three or four strides, and he's game to the wire. Yeah, he's just he's much the best in here. Uh, he, he just came came with a really strong finish after losing a little bit of position early in this race, too. He's just he's too good for these horses. The Woodbine mile three starts back there. Dan, that had a really fast pace for him to attack. And he's probably not going to get that here. But as you've already pointed out, um, he doesn't likely need it either. He's just really, really good overall. And uh, this trainer just ships over here and wins everything on the turf year after year. 
especially at Keeneland, and this horse won over a similar layoff in the French 2000 Guineas. Cabo Spirit is up next. He'll be a big price, but he was a big price last time out, and he only got beat a length in the grade one Kilro mile at Santa Anita. This was over a wet turf course. He showed the ability to stay uh, close to the early pace in this race, and he's kind of going to grind it out to finish third. Uh, does he have to move forward? Certainly. This is a big step up in class, but at least he's coming into the race in solid form. Yeah, I agree with that stuff. I mean, he I thought he ran pretty well in here. You could see him. He's just getting out kicked by the two horses on either side of him there at the end. So I don't think you can watch the kill roll back and say he had some kind of big excuse. But he was, you know, up behind horses for most of that trip under a really big hold, Dan. And that might not be his preferred running style. He just doesn't really have that acceleration you like to see. But if he gets clear in time um, and there's anything from the run at in here, I think he could be a factor late at a price. Now, before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the Friday race of the day, the Maker's Mark Mile. Hate to chalk it out. Modern games, though, listen, his PPs speak for themselves. And I think if he shows up with his usual race, he's too much for this field. I do think Emmanuel is a very talented horse that might have a bit of a tactical edge on this field. But, Mike, you're going to try to make some money with the old 7-8 number. I put Cabo Spirit in there just because I think he is going to be a big price in this race, Dan. And I do think he's maybe a little bit underrated. That's why I, I used him a second. Like you, I just I couldn't really talk myself into betting against modern games in here, even at the really short price. I'm most interested to see what the two up to the mark does in this race because he's been so impressive since they switched him to turf. Um, and he's a great price on the morning line. 7825 for Mike, 7418 for me. We'll see if Modern Games puts another grade one notch in his belt in Friday's Maker's Mark Mile at Keeneland. Good luck.